science and engineering. We have three areas in the faculty, with the digital or IT, motor vehicle and engineering. Jackie will talk to you about engineering courses. Mark will talk about motor vehicle courses and then I'll talk about IT courses. But first, I'd like to just uh, let you know about something that we have, which is called the Institute of Technology, which is a new 2.3 million pound investment from the government into technology areas, which fall mainly in this faculty. Uh, this, this allows us to have brand new facilities, uh, particularly in engineering and digital. Uh, and we're really, really excited about the new provision we have there. So perhaps Jackie, if you could talk about engineering courses. Okay. Thanks, Simon. So um, I'm, as uh, Simon said, I'm Jackie Thomas. I'm faculty um, manager for engineering, which is where my special, uh, specialty lies. Uh, but also um, I'm um, head uh, faculty manager for computing as well. Um, in our engineering, we have a um, facilities that are about uh, three years old now, uh, with uh, a large investment going into new machines and equipment uh, when we had the new building uh, um, given to us. Um, so um, within um, that building, uh, we we um, host our level two um, engineering program, our level three engineering program, and also a various amount of um, a, apprentice, uh, apprenticeships. Um, on the level two provision, uh, we spend about um, uh, Within the within the study program um, in the core engineering, uh, probably spend about sixty percent of our time um, in practical. Um, so within the workshop, we'll be learning how to use our hands using bench fitting, um, be um, using the mills and lathes, um, and learning how to read a drawing, um, and then be actual actually be able to make um, make the part from that drawing to a good specification. Um, there also is some theory elements to that level two course, uh, which kind of like really gives you the foundation knowledge that you can then take and, and move on to level three. Um, we're, um, for the, the entry requirements for that level two um, course is four grade threes. Um, they don't have to have maths and English, but we would be looking for maths to um, definitely be in one of them grade threes, because that's really a fundamental part of our study program is the maths element. Uh, whether you're looking at a drawing or whether you're you know, making calculations um, in a theory class. Uh, we then move on to level three. Um, and uh, that's that we're taking a lot more theory on board now. Um, so you would be uh, studying seven, seven units within um, the first year and them units would be um, looking at our looking about um, yeah, health and safety and some like core units like maths uh, mechanical principles like uh, foundation ones that you need to know um, and then you'd also have some um, specialist units um, like um, EEP so electrical electronic principles um, CAD um, and um, mechanical measurement. So um, it's kind of like all, all builds up to make uh, a good um, uh, foundation to move on into the second year. Um, and you would um, probably be in theory, you know, the practical elements are more sort of like working in CAD, doing electrical circuits, um, rather than thinking, actually, I'm going to be in the workshop a lot of the time. And um, to, to um, study at level three, you would need five um, grade four. And we're asking for maths to be a good like grade five and that you'd be working on the higher paper really to be able to um, accommodate for the math element of that course. Um, and English would need to be in that, um, that qualification, um, your, your entry requirements as well. Um, so we also have an apprenticeship program, which I'm not gonna talk about today, but that's sort of like very much, um, a big part of um, our engineering department. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Mark to uh, um, allow him to talk about motor vehicle. Thank you, Jackie, and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Glover. I am the faculty manager for motor vehicle at uh, Petroc and um, very, very pleased with the, uh, the department that we have, which is uh, we, um, you know, our aim really is to. Uh, engage people and, and, and get, uh, get them qualified to enter into the motor 
vehicle uh, trade, motor industry, uh, which is obviously, um, I think, a, a very exciting uh, industry and one which is undergoing uh, lots and lots of change just at the moment. Uh, has been for, for several years, to be fair, but uh, we're all aware of the, of the recent changes. So uh, very exciting. Um, so within our department itself, um, we have a fantastic workshop um, with lots and lots of really, really good equipment, um, diagnostic tools, hand tools, etc training vehicles um, and within that workshop and within our classrooms we deliver full-time programs and apprenticeship programs so let me start really with uh, the full-time courses that we we uh, deliver um, level one program uh, which is a, a year in duration it's uh, called a certificate in transport maintenance and uh, our level one students will come through to us and uh, and, and study uh, sort of vehicle fundamentals, things ranging from uh, uh, wheels, tires, engines, um, brakes, suspension, um, all sorts of kind of uh, fundamental knowledge right across the motor vehicle, uh, assessed in both uh, practical and theory. Um, for that particular course, we, we do require entrance requirements uh, at, uh, and we're after four GCSEs at grades uh, two and above, um, ideally with uh, that's including English and maths. Our full time provision can then lead into a level two, which is a further year, uh, the level two diploma, um, really, really good course. Um, kind of builds on level one really, uh, but obviously a little bit more complex in the uh, in sort of the detail. Some of the assessments are, are um, well, there's more of them and, and, and uh, more in depth, both with the practical and theory. That could move in potentially to level three as well. That's something that we've uh, we've delivered in the past and we always look, look to try and achieve that if we can. Um, our main level three programme, however, is the apprenticeship. Uh, program and we have uh, uh, many many uh, apprentices with us uh, we work really closely with lots of local employers and garages um, and that apprenticeship program is called a uh, an apprenticeship standard uh, light vehicle uh, service and maintenance technician standard and um, it's over three years we operate a day release model so the individual the apprentice would be with us for one day of the week and uh, with the employer at the workplace for the uh, the remainder of the week. And uh, across those three years, there is um, a number of groups of knowledge and practical skills that need to be, uh, need to be sort of um, uh, achieved, um, culminating in, a, in an endpoint assessment at the end of the third year. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell of what, what we deliver really uh, at Petrock within Motor Vehicle. Um, obviously, if you do have any questions at all, then please, uh, um, uh, please you know, place them in the comments box and we can uh, we can sort of attend to those questions as we go through. Um, so uh, that's I'd like to hand over, if that's OK, uh, to Simon. So I think Simon wants to speak a little bit around IT. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So we have um, we have full time IT courses at three levels. Um, we start with level one, which gives a basic introduction um, to IT for one year. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to, to really build on your, your academic skills from, uh, from school with an opportunity alongside to, to boost your maths and English skills. Uh, at level two, uh, which is another one year course, where we'll be looking for, for at least uh, four grade threes, um, we have uh, a more in-depth introduction to programming and website design, uh, computer architecture. And if you're successful on that, that can lead on to the, the level three courses. Now for this year, we have uh, replaced our BTEC courses with something called T-Levels, which you may not have heard about. T-Levels are a new course uh, designed um, at the instigation of the government, really working with employers to, to bridge the skills demand that employers want. And they will allow you to to get um, a qualification which is worth three A levels, a really solid qualification in in technology and digital technology. But alongside that, you'll have to do forty five days working with a, a local employer to really get some hands on skills and see how 
how it's applied in the workplace. Um, on top of that, we we offer, um, as, as Mark and Jackie have said in, in their areas, um, apprenticeships, and we've got three apprenticeships, um, which one is on the software solution side, one is more on the hardware infrastructure, infrastructure and, a, and a new one, which is digital marketer, which is uh, allowing you to um, really sort of bridge the, the, the business marketing and um, and design of, of, of marketing materials. Uh, so thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? There's a question from Mark, um, from uh, Jonathan Mather, which is, hi Mark, where is the motor vehicle workshop based and is all the course at this site? Yeah, so yeah, happy to answer that question. So the motor vehicle workshop um, is based at Barnstable. Uh, there is another one actually at the Mid Devon campus at Tiverton. Um, but regarding North Devon, the motor vehicle workshop is in our main campus at, um, at Barnstable, uh, as is uh, you know the classroom. So anyone uh, attending North Devon campus for um, for a motor vehicle course will find themselves um, on on the main site uh, for the duration of that program. So hopefully that kind of clears that one up all, all being well. Um, if obviously if if an individual is um, based nearer the, the Mid Devon sort of site, then uh, like I said, there's another um, excellent uh, facility at uh, at Tiverton as well, a motor vehicle. Um, but they're on they are on the main campuses. So this question here: what, What's the difference between digital and IT? Uh, well, that, that's a, that's a good a good question. It's um, it's really I would say there's probably probably no difference, and, and fashion has changed what we have known and loved as IT or information technology to become to become known as digital. It's a little bit broader uh, and would include uh, things such as uh, the Internet of Things and um, artificial intelligence and big data and things like that. So we've got a question here, what, what can the courses lead to in terms of further study and employment? So I think that's, that's one for each of us in terms. So perhaps Jackie, if you could take that first. Okay, so um, ideally, uh, when, when you come to us, um, you will either study level two or level three, well, that's, they're the two cho choices on offer. Um, and after each of these, um, what, what we tend to find is at level two, um, the students will progress on to level three and at level three they're, they're, there's then quite a lot of options for them um, to be able to progress on to. So the course we run has UCAS points associated with it for level three um, so um, you know that's equivalent to three A levels so actually what they can do is they can go on to university it's one one of the um, uh, one of the options that our students do is um, they could go and study a, a range of different um, university courses um, in engineering and it's not just like mechanical you know there's electrical there's civil there's um air aerospace uh, mechatronics there's uh, engineering is so broad uh, and you can go on lots of different things um the other one we have is um apprenticeships and um, so um they'll take the level three apprenticeship and they might move on to an advanced apprenticeship a lot of the time they'll do the level three um apprenticeship uh, because you they need to gain the um competence in the workplace part of um uh, that um, that uh, to get that level, um, and then um, they will, um, you know, they can then progress on to level four if that is what the company uh, would, would would like them to do. Um, so there is within the apprenticeship, there is very much an option for them to totally, you know, go into do their higher education as well. You know, and in, in North Devon now, we can um, uh, we can get in uh, to level six. Um, within um, the IOT, you know, within the new IOT, there is a level six provision. So actually you can go all, you know, you can do all of them um, courses at high, in higher education as an apprentice or as a um, university student. Um, and then the other one that we find a lot of students do um, is they go to um, into the military. 
um, whether it be, you know, on, on ev any of them. Um, and, uh, you know, every year we'll get um, a couple of students that will, that will move into that area um, as well. Um, so there are kind of like three main progression routes um, that we find um, uh, that we have within um, our students. So. And, and Mark, you, could you talk about the motor vehicle progression? Absolutely, yes, Simon. So the uh, with motor vehicle, um, if you're looking at the full time programmes, then um, uh, many of our students will start at level one, and obviously, as I mentioned earlier, can progress to level two and on to level three. Um, and ideally, uh, to find employment with, within the in, within the industry itself. Um, so even from an apprenticeship, which is the level three apprenticeship, from that point on. The motor vehicle uh, trade is, is just um, very um, uh, large, you know, it's vast really. So not only is there kind of servicing or the technician role, this diagnostic technician, um, obviously sales parts, um, rental, for example, um, vehicle body uh, and lots of different kind of areas of that uh, industry. If you look at the um, sort of the technician vehicle technician route as as um, uh, in, in particular, then um, our courses, our, our apprenticeship course, could lead on and does lead on to things such as MOT testing courses, uh, diagnostic um, programs, and even um, there's you know really strong emphasis around uh, electric vehicle and hybrid training at the moment. And certainly uh, a demand for that kind of work or certainly um, bit the demand is building for that kind of work. Um, so the progression there is uh, is, is really good uh, within the industry itself. So that's that's kind of the areas where our courses lead and um, and further in, um, sort of employment as well. OK, and if I could brief, just briefly talk about some of the uh, digital uh, progression. Uh, if you have studied um, an, an IT course, uh, so you level one and then progress to level two, you'll have a really good basic grounding in in the use of um, of IT and technology, and that that can lead into to employment in in almost any field of business, whether it's office administration or anything like that. It's, it's a really strong basis. At level three, uh, and you're, you're showing your interest in actually doing the IT perhaps a little bit more and you would likely progress either onto an apprenticeship where you could either specialize in 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 support where you uh, where you're, you're you're going to be in an organization and helping run the IT function of that organization or you could be in, in software solutions whether that's web design mobile apps or whatever um, although if you're going to do that that's nearly an entirely graduate um, career path, so you likely be looking to move on to do a degree. Petrop, we offer we offer two uh, foundation degrees uh, with a top up year in Plymouth, or you can go to to any of the um, excellent uh, higher education establishments around the country, and 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 study a range of computing courses, potentially even robotics or something like that. Um, if you if you do want to go into work rather than into higher education, then, then your approach would be to, to, to land a, an apprenticeship, as I've as I spoken about before, where you would go in and work in, um, in a business and, and you would learn the skills with the support of your colleagues. The, if, if, you, if you really want to go into software, uh, I, I would strongly recommend that you be planning to to, to get a degree if, if you want to go into the support side of it then it is possible to to go through the apprenticeship route at level three so we've got another question are you able to go into any go into anything about the foundation degree in game development uh, anything that would be an advantage to know going in and what links does the college have with the industry um, so that I, I can talk in general terms uh, that doesn't actually sit within the, um, the faculty of digital science and engineering currently but i have some knowledge of it so the the game development what what we've designed with the foundation degree in game development is is um is about 70 percent a, a general computing degree and then and then it specializes in in 
computing in the in the games industry so it, it, it specifically isn't a games design so if, if you're looking at designing the backgrounds the walkthroughs uh the the storyboarding of 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 the game of the game itself then that would be a games design degree which which we don't offer so the the, the key thing for going into games development currently is that you know how to program c plus plus so with it within our within our course um we have the the um a very solid two programming modules uh, in consecutive years um, so the C, C sharp and C plus plus and one one of the ideas is 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 that you have the the game skills but you also have a, a very solid programming background so the, the there are a lot more people getting games development degrees than there are games development jobs at the moment so we we feel a great responsibility to make sure that you're employable either in the games industry or in the wider IT industry, uh, anything would be an advantage. So, so yes, learn how to code C++ uh, exactly. Um, the links with college uh, have with the industry at the moment. We we I have to say we're developing the links with the, with the industry. Um, so we don't have a, a a games company in North Devon with direct links at the moment. So this question um, from Jonathan again, Mark, it's a level one motor vehicle course five days a week. Uh, my lad is currently doing a basic course at Biddeford College one day a week in year 11. Should he start at level one? Right. OK, so uh, the level one course, uh, it's, it's, it's known as a full time program, but it's not actually five days a week. Um, it's more like uh, around about four days of the week. Um, and in relation to to, uh, to your son, uh, your lad, um, the course at Bideford College, I don't know uh, how how kind of intense that is or what kind of detail, what kind of level that goes into. But it's, it's very likely that if an individual comes to us with previous kind of experience or previous knowledge or previous qualification, they may well find themselves on a level two programme from the outset. Uh, generally speaking, uh, without those kind of uh, experiences, uh, without any kind of previous knowledge or qualification, then it would be a level one. So we'd very much want to sort of have a little chat with him and just find out a little bit about what the college has done, what Bidford College has done. Um, but yeah, there's absolutely a possibility that could be a level two starter um, as opposed to level one. Um, but like I said, not five days a week, uh, probably more like four, um, in some cases around about three and a half. So it kind of depends a little bit on the individual um, and, and um, but uh, but not not five days a week. So I hope that answers your question. And I hope he's enjoying the uh, the program at Biddeford College and really enjoying the, uh, the, the motor vehicle aspect of that. So it sounds good. Well done. And for Jackie, how much practical work do you do within the engineering courses? Um, so uh, I've like um, talked a little bit about this in the introduction, but actually, you know, it's quite important that we go over this because sometimes people come from college um, and they really think, oh, I'm going to be, it's kind of like, I'm going to be in the workshop all the time and making things and doing things. And actually, that's brilliant in engineering. And yes, we do do that. Um, but we're trying to educate you about the the theory and um you know the underpinning knowledge of everything that goes in underneath the, the you know the practical work so in our level two course um probably um in the workshop about 60 60 percent of the time so if you do really really want to be their hands in making things then our level two course is right and we have quite a lot of um times we have um, students that have come in with really good grades um, in their GCSEs, but they're like, actually, I want to be able to make something. I want to be able to use my hands on skills um, with, uh, to, to do it. I don't necessarily want to sit in the classroom quite yet. Um, so, you know, they'll, they'll be in the workshop about 60 percent of the time. Um, but then there's that um, also that the, they do a lot of theory as well um, that backs up that classroom, uh, that you know, practical work um, and, you know, the, the maths and the science that goes into that um, and and health and safety. Um, some of the core principles that we need to always have within um, our engineering courses. Um, and then in, when we progress into level three, um, our practical skills um, in the workshop drop off quite a lot. 
Okay, so um, we will be in the um, classroom doing a lot more theory, but the practical work kind of like switches pace a little bit. So rather than being, you know, we do do quite a lot. We do do um, stuff in the workshop in the second year. We'll, we'll learn to program CNC um, machines. Um, we'll do some welding. Um, so there are practical elements within that, but um, in the um, uh, yeah, within the level three course, our practical is more looking like we're working on CAD, you know, computer aided design, learning how to use AutoCAD and SolidWorks. So it's kind of like practical work that isn't really what you would think is practical work. And, you know, again, um, in our electronics, would we be working um, a lot with um, uh, with testing and uh, making breadboards, you know, circuits, testing circuits. Um, and, and bits and pieces like that. Um, so, um, and then there are also quite a lot of practical um, assessments um, that go alongside a lot of our units. And um, so I would um, just be wary that on the level three course, it, we, you know, we're not necessarily going to be in the workshop making things a lot. You know, we do have the project in the second year again. Probably the second year is probably a little bit more practical than the first year because you're getting the underpinning knowledge in the first year. Um, so I would say it's, like, it's probably an 80 20, so 80 theory, 20 um, practical on the level three. No. And, and if, I, if I could just add in, um, if, if, you, if you're just about to start your, your career in, 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 in anything, in engineering, now with the with the possible 40 year working lifetime the next 40 years are going to be uh, another industrial revolution um, and we're already seeing starting to see uh, automation um, and additive technologies 3d printing coming into to engineering for example where where this the skills of the of, of, of the engineer um, will really really need this strong theoretical underpinning that jack is Jack is talking to, because fundamentally the machines will be allowed, able to do a lot of the engineering themselves, um, but, but the human beings are going to be really important in the in the design of the of, of the products and components that the machines are making. Mm -hmm. So, what is the digital T level, and what is it equivalent to? So, the digital T level, um, the, the, there's there's that actually two on offer uh, so there's one uh, which is digital design uh, and development and there's another which is uh, digital business support so the digital design and development is, is really uh, equivalent to three A levels but all in software engineering so all, all T levels have a, a, a core that's common across them uh, and the the common core is is really about understanding how businesses work so they're about business structure business processes and then within within the individual individual pathways and specialisms uh, it, it sort of drills down into into more specific things so for the digital production it would be really looking at, at the structure of how how algorithms work programming languages data types all the nitty gritty that are going to help you have a career in in, in writing software, and on the on the support side, it, it, it's really looking in more depth. There's two two ways you can go within the support side. You can you can either go to the um, the IT support, which is really helping an organisation, um, so people that aren't particularly good at IT in an organisation, and um, get the best out of the the, the equipment and facilities the organisation has. And on the other side, which is more of hardware side, there's, there's the, the networking, which is actually putting the physical infrastructure of, a, of an IT network together. And as I said, it's, it's, it has the same UCAS points as, as three A levels and can lead on to um, higher education. So as you can see, we, we're coming to a close now. Um, and on the screen now, you can see that if you need more advice and guidance, uh, more information, you can contact our advice and guidance team and the the email address and telephone numbers are there on the screen. Uh, thank you all very much for your time and thank you, um, Mark and Jackie, uh, for your for your really helpful answers.